Hey everyone, James here from Sweepy Machine Embroidery. With Christmas fast approaching, Sweepy has been hard at work releasing some amazing Christmas designs. For the October sew along, we are making this stunning poinsettia blocks and quilt to give you a chance to get it finished before Christmas time. The quilt can be made in the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and the 7x7 size hoops. There are four blocks included with this design. In this video tutorial, we'll be showing you the stitch out of the two flower blocks, the border blocks, and the construction of the poinsettia quilt. We recommend you follow our written, photographed instructions in conjunction with this video tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Then place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch down. When laying down batting, we use the pink thing to keep it lying flat so it doesn't bunch up under the needle. Once stitched down, remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching using your applique scissors. Next place Fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the batting. Stitch down. Embroider the leaves. Stitch the placement line for the back pedals. Place fabric B right side up on top of the hoop covering the placement line. Stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about one to two millimeters from the stitching. Repeat the applique process for the front pedals using Fabric C. and trim. Embroider the satin stitch around the back pedals. Embroider the satin stitch around the front pedals. Embroider the detailing on the front pedals. Embroider the flowers. Embroider the flower centers. You have now completed the stitch out of block one. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch using a rotary cutter and ruler. Here you have the completed block. Hold aside and follow the instructions for the remaining blocks you want to make. Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Then place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch down. 
When laying down batting, we use the pink thing to keep it lying flat so it doesn't bunch up under the needle. Once stitched down, remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching using your applique scissors. Stitch the placement line for the background. Place fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the placement line. Stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Using the top edge of fabric A as a placement line, place one piece of fabric B wrong side up on top of the hoop, crossing the placement line a quarter of an inch, with excess fabric towards the bottom of the hoop, and stitch down. Fold the fabric back towards the top of the hoop. Hold taut and stitch down. Trim the left and right hand edges of this piece of fabric. Repeat the flip and fold process for the bottom border using another piece of fabric B. This time use the bottom edge of fabric A as a placement line and fold back towards the bottom of the hoop. Then trim the left and right hand edges of this piece of fabric. Repeat the flip and fold process for the left border using another piece of fabric B. This time use the left edge of fabric A as a placement line and fold back towards the left of the hoop. Do not trim. Repeat the flip and fold process for the right border using the remaining piece of fabric B. This time use the right edge of fabric A as a placement line and fold back towards the right of the hoop. Do not trim. Follow the same applique and embroidery processes as step 3 to 12 in block 1. You have now completed the stitch out of block 2. Remove your work from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch using your rotary cutter and ruler. Here you have the completed block. Hold the side and follow instructions for the remaining blocks you want to make. To make the corner blocks, stitch the placement lines for the batting. Place batting 3 on top of the hoop. 
stitch the batting down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about 1-2mm to two millimeters from the stitching. Place Fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the placement lines. And stitch down. Embroider the branch on each block. Embroider the berries. Remove the hoop and trim the seams to about half an inch. Hold this side until all your blocks and panels are made. Now let's turn our beautiful blocks into a quilt. Lay out your blocks on a flat surface and decide on your layout. Start off by joining the blocks in rows. Place the first two blocks right sides together. Pin along one edge lining up the border stitching the best you can. Take your time with this process. Take the pin blocks over to your sewing machine and sew a half inch seam. Sewing just inside the border lines already on the panels. Open out the stitch seam and iron flat. Continue this until you have joined the remaining blocks in that row together. Continue this until you have each horizontal row of blocks joined. Next, join the horizontal rows to each other by placing the first two rows right sides together. Pin and stitch the seams on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks, so the stitching will not be seen on the right sides later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Continue this until you have joined all of the horizontal rows together. We will now add the backing. Place your backing fabric wrong side up on top of your work surface. 
Then place the quilt you have just made right side up on top of the backing fabric, wrong sides together. Lightly spray your backing fabric to the back of your quilt to help the block stay in place while attaching the binding. We use this can spray adhesive. To join the backing, stitch in the ditch the seams in between each block as well as the two end seams. Once this is done, trim the excess backing fabric so it matches the exact shape of the quilt. Alright, let's prepare the binding. To make the binding, measure the length and width of the quilt and add them together and multiply by 2. If you are cutting one strip of fabric for the binding, add about an extra 12 to 16 inches or 30 to 40 centimeters to the new measurement. Just to be sure you have enough fabric in the end. Or cut a few strips and join them together with your sewing machine as shown. Add extra length if you are joining strips, about 4 inches or 10 centimeters per strip. The width is optional, but we usually find 3 inches 8 cm wide sufficient. Lay the ends of your fabric strips right sides together at a right angle. Pin the two pieces of fabric together keeping the edges matching. Draw a 45 degree angle with the fabric marker. Then sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner. Cut the corner a quarter of an inch from the stitch down. Now iron open the seam and repeat until all the binding strips are sewn together into one long strip. Then fold the whole strip in half, wrong sides together and iron down. Lay out your binding and unfold one end. Fold that open end of the binding to a 45 degree angle as shown below and lightly press. Trim your fabric a quarter of an inch from the 45 degree angle fold. Fold the binding strip in half again as shown below. You can work from either the front of the quilt or the back of the quilt. We have decided to stitch our binding to the back of the quilt first to make it easier to hide the border stitching on the front of the quilt. Match the raw edges of the quilt and the binding to the desired starting location. With your quilt right or wrong side up, start about halfway along one side. Using a ruler, mark one inch down from the end of the strip. Mark with a pin. Using your ruler, mark three inches down from the one inch mark. Mark with a second pin. At this time, we also marked a two inch gap above from the first pin. This pin will signal when to stop stitching once we have sewn around the quilt. Using a three eighths of an inch seam, stitch one inch of the open fold onto the quilt and stop stitching when you get to the one inch mark. Then leave a 3 inch gap, this will provide an opening to insert the end of the binding fabric when we have completed the sewing. Then start stitching again at the 3 inch mark. Continue sewing until you reach the first corner and stop stitching 3 eighths of an inch 1 centimeter from the end. 
but keep your needle down. Lift your foot and turn your quilt with your needle still down. Continue stitching to the corner. Lift the binding strip over and pull against that angled stitch that we just made to form a diagonal fold. Then fold the binding strip back again creating a fold at the top. Pin and start stitching until you reach the side of the quilt that you started on, mitering the corners as you go. Stop stitching when you get to the pin that marks the 2 inches from the starting point. Fold up the remaining binding so it sits just above the first 3 inch mark. Trim the excess binding along this fold. Trim a 1 8 or 2 to 3 millimeters off the raw edge of the binding for a good 1 inch, 2 to 3 centimeters. Place the end of the binding fabric into the pocket created at the start of the binding process. Pin in place. Continue to stitch the seam until binding is completely sewn on. Fold back the binding and iron the seams flat. Now turn the quilt over so you're working on the back or front of the quilt. We started at the corners of the quilt. Fold in one side of the corner just past the stitching and iron well. Pin in place. This will help get a nice pointed corner. Repeat for the other sides of the corner, meeting up with the first fold creating a nice pointed corner. Repeat for all four corners of the quilt. Then continue folding and pinning the remaining binding to the back or front of the quilt, just past the stitching once folded. Iron well. Start stitching anywhere on the quilt from the front. Make sure your top thread and bobbin thread match the colour of your binding and backing fabrics. When you get to the corner, simply just leave your needle down and lift the foot and rotate the quilt. Put your foot down and continue stitching in this fashion until you're right around the quilt.
give it a good press and enjoy your quilt. Thanks for watching Sweet Peas tutorial on the poinsettia blocks and quilt. Good luck with this fun project and remember to join the Sew Along group for 30% off this design. The link for the Facebook group will be in the description. See you all next time. Happy crafting.